Yeah, what do they say? You, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it's already broke, you can't screw it up, right? <laughs> so in this case, it's already broke. You can't screw it up. Welcome to Cash Call, the number one real estate sales podcast where we cover real sales skills in real time, as well as industry vendors, lead providers, CRMs, websites, and top producing teams and agents across North America, all so that you can improve your business in 30 minutes at a time. Cash Call, everybody. Dale Archdeacon, and Brian Curtis back for another week. We're excited with I feel like this whole pre-recording idea is really working out, man. You know, it, it gives us an opportunity to edit some stuff. It does. You know, if I could get my computer to work so I didn't have to wear these headsets, it would be better. But, uh, you know, we can't have everything all at once, right? <laughs> no, no. But, you know, it does allow you to go change. So you changed your shirt, right? Just before I did. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so we can always correct things. But so the call I have today is one of our students, um, Brian. And, uh, you know, I, I'll just preface it. So the intro needs a little work, right? She did what she shouldn't do. But uh, the guy hits her with an objection pretty early in the call. She does a great question into the objection, but then starts pitching. Her okay. pitch sounds awesome. It sounds great. But, you know, it's what happens is she ends up getting objections later on that she could have otherwise found out about. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. It's only three minutes and 45 seconds. And let's hope I do it correctly. So I'm going to find the call and click share. Here we go. You'll let me know if you hear it, Brian. Hello. Hi, is this Bill? Yes. Hi, this is Jackie. I'm an agent from we, uh, We've had some communication with you in the past, and I just didn't know if you were looking to buy a home in the near future. Okay, so decent question. Are you looking to buy a home in the near future? She prefaced that basically we talked to you, you know, in the past. I think she could improve that by saying, you know, you registered a long time ago or you inquired about something, you know, months ago. I think she could improve it a little bit and go in assumptively with his name instead of yeah, asking. I yeah, that's that was my big takeaway when when I heard this was one of the things that we've got to do is just and, and this person's not our friend. We're not trying to be friends with our clients, but you're not going to call somebody, you know, and go, is this Dale? Like none of, when Dale calls me, he doesn't go, is this Brian? Unless I sound weird or something. So, right. yeah, stay away from that. It raises a red flag. It says I'm a salesperson who you don't know or care about. That's what it says. That's the that's the implied thing in there. So just hey, Bill, this is Susie with da 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 da. Just go into the script. You don't have to ask if it's him. If it's not him, he'll say it's ain't Bill. Gonna let you know, right? Okay, so we mm. get into it. You know, it, it stumbles a little bit. Actually, his response was good because he kind of went up on the end of his response. His energy went up when he responded. So mm -hmm. you know, that's sort of out of the ordinary, honestly, for somebody to sound yeah. more excited when you don't know who they are. Um, so let's, let's keep playing this and notice that it's, we're at 13 seconds. Now she asked her question. Um, no, not at this time. I was during the summer, but no, I'm good now. What, what, too. yeah. What changed for you now? Great question. Except that she stepped all over him to ask it. Yeah. Right? She was like so excited to ask it. She's like, I, I know, know the right answer. answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I've been trained. I know how to do it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Patience. Patience is important in, in lead generation. Slow down. Yeah. And also like make it, you know, you want to make the question sound like you just thought of it, not you've asked this of the last 20 people who said not now. Right. Absolutely. What changed for me? Um, no, interest rates are kind of high and I'm, I'm good right now. Yeah. You know, I'm just, yeah, I'm just not looking for anything right now, but okay. I appreciate it though. Yeah, of course. You know, we just, we have you on our list of kind of, someone who's you know looked in the past so we sort of reach out every once in a while so sorry to bother you but you know i okay now he said interest rates are kind of high so he's not looking for now right mm -hmm. so he's changed his mind he's no longer looking it's because the interest rates are high so she did a good job asking initially right what changed for you and he said it was the interest rates now Let's listen to what she does. And, you know, for people who listen to our podcast, you know that this is not what you want to do. You don't want to start pitching like this, especially with somebody who's willing to answer your questions. Yeah. And before you hit the play on that, Dale, one of the things I also want to point out is I don't know if you noticed or our audience noticed, but there's a little bit of 
indecision. There's a little bit of lack of confidence, you know, sort of those ver instead of, instead of saying things like they're facts, she's kind of like, well, I kind of believe what I'm about to say. So be careful because that, if you're not confident, the the client's not going to be confident in, in you. So just be careful with those that uncertainty that I, I you hear in their voice by saying, "Well, sort of," and different things like that. So, yeah, I think she was trying to figure out what to do, and then she came up with, "Let me pitch this guy and tell him how great a time it is to buy." So let's see how that goes. I did want to, you know, we actually get a lot of inside information with the market and. I know a lot of people are, you know, they're nervous about the rates, but to be honest, there's not a lot of competition right now because of that, and the rates are projected to go down. So, you know, once those rates go down, you can refinance. It's actually a pretty good time to buy right now. Okay, so there's one pitch, right? It's a good time to buy right now because interest rates, you know, uh, they go down and you can refine. There's not a lot of people looking. So, and I cranked this up to 1.25, so let's keep going. You're thinking that, huh? Absolutely, right. yeah. There's just not a, you know, that in the past with the rates being so low, I can mm -hmm. see some experience because I, I bought a home when the rates were really low and it was so hard. It took me like 30 offers or something to get my home purchased because there was so much competition. So Where did you buy a home at? In Long Beach. Okay. Yeah, so it kind of drives the rates up. And then, so actually, it's, it's actually a pretty good time to buy now because you're not going to have the same competition. And then refinancing is always a great option, which people can do you know, not too far along after they've already purchased the home. Now, all that sounds excellent, right? That's a fantastic. It's accurate. It's accurate. It's a fantastic personal story that you have, right? Mm -hmm. To build rapport, you have clear uh, experience with this, and, and it's really great thing that she used. Here's my argument. You're using it at the wrong time. You, you want to get more from the guy as to, hey, how did how are the interest rates impacting your decision to purchase some sort of question like that i need to get more from him what are you trying to do what what about the interest rates or are the interest rates the only reason that you changed your plans some a, a couple of questions like that so you understand more about what the guy is doing and why i agree and then the other thing is this is all telling and not selling right so you know, here's a question I would have asked. Hey, out of curiosity, were you in the market in 2021 when the interest rates were really low? When someone says yes to that, then I want to I want to remind them of the pain, because if you tried to buy a house in 2021 and you failed, it was painful. It was. Yeah. I competed against 25 people on every house. I offered more than it, all the. I waived all these things, and so she didn't do any of that. Um, and let's say he wasn't. Then again, the next question, no, I wasn't. Oh, okay. By the way, do you know anybody else who was in the market when the interest rates were really low? And do you, are you familiar with the experience? No, I'm not. Is it okay if I kind of explain to you what my clients went through during that time so you can get an idea of what that was like? Sure. Why? Okay. You know, you can go through and, but I watch agents skip the part all the time where they don't they don't ask that question so all they're doing is sounding like salespeople yep it's a great time yep. to buy right now well what salesperson is going to say it's a crappy time to buy now wait six months not not a good one and it, yep. so it sounds like a sales pitch and that's what concerns me more than anything else is that without asking more questions like dale said you're going to sound like a salesperson and the person's not going to believe you yeah absolutely uh, so I think exactly what Brian said, plus you got to get more from the person before you're going to try mm -hmm. to pitch them, right? Yes. And so what, what ends up happening in this call is that he was trying to buy an investment property. And then mm -hmm. he says, well, you know, I don't know. There's something about how, like, if I'm going to, I have a condo, if I'm going to buy another condo, it has to be a certain distance away from the one that I have. So it sounds like he was trying to buy a, an investment property as a second home, right? Uh, and so the agent doesn't quite understand that, but she does want, she makes an offer to talk to a lender and he says, well, you know, I'll, I'll let you know, but right now the prices are just too high. So it, it just kind of goes off the rails where she could have kept it together and could have moved something forward with this guy, I think. And, and then I want to shoot down here to the end where this gets wrapped up. This is just not going to, it's, you know, we hear this a lot and this is not a good wrap up. Do you want me just to reach out every once in a while and just check in and see? Yeah, most definitely. At? Just give me a call. Let me know what's up. Okay, awesome. Sounds good, Bill. We'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. You got it. Take care. No.
Do you want me to reach out to you every once in a while? It's not going to happen. There's a, you know, call me. That was a call me, right? Um, that's definitely not going to happen. So, you know, when you wrap that up, I, I think that she could have had a much, she sounds fantastic. She did a really good pitch, right? The problem is she needed to do more discovery first and she needed to get some permission to educate or, or you know, figure out what his experience was before she starts sharing experience, like you said, Brian. Yeah, and, and Dale, I'm sure you see this all the time too. It's like, I learned this script. I learned the script of when the person says the interest rates are too high, I tell them the interest rates are not too high. The interest rates are just fine. And as a matter of fact, they're going to get better and it's going to work out better for you. Yeah. That's telling. And, and it's, by the way, I believe it to be true. I believe now's a better time to buy than when the interest rates drop a point. I don't know when that, yeah. if and when that'll happen. But right. I believe if the interest rates drop a point, it's going to be a, it's going to be crazy competitive and it's going to be very similar to how it was in 2021. One, we still have an inventory. All those things are true. But me telling you that does not convince you that it should happen. So, yes, agreed. You know, this is a fun call, and there's a lot of different things that, that happen in this call. It's, it's really pretty short, but there's still a lot going on. And w the reason I really wanted to, to show this is listen to the interaction. And this is something I see agents do all too often, Dale. I'm sure you've seen it as well, is when things don't go perfectly, sometimes the agent gets frustrated. Oh, yeah. And by the way, guys, I get frustrated too. And you're allowed to get frustrated. It's, uh, you know, all those different things. That being said... If you get frustrated on a phone call, it's going to cost you a deal. And I'm not saying right. it costs this person a deal, but those are things that we have to do. We have to manage our state. And I think it's kind of interesting. And so why don't I, I'll just go ahead and play this and we can get an idea. Um, Dale, as always, please give me a thumbs up if we uh, do this. As we're using this new software, and so far I'm relatively inept, so hopefully it'll work. So I'll say that it's Riverside. If this works out really well, we'll keep that in. If it isn't good, we'll edit that out. Fair enough. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Bueno. Bueno. Uh, Realtor.com had me give you a call. Oh, yeah. Okay, are you looking for a house? So what I want to point out is, okay, in this agent, I, I like this agent. He's a friend of mine. He's a good guy. But he did the thing that we do when we're talking to people in another language. Talking louder does not help someone understand another language better. <laughs> <laughs> but you heard what I'm saying. What I'm saying, like, he almost yelled at the guy. And I understand. He's like, okay, I want to connect. I want to figure this out. Patience. You have to have patience. So, so I want to understand something. The agent... Uh, started in Spanish or the lead answered in Spanish? The, the then... lead, the the agent does not speak Spanish. Oh, so that was the lead that started speaking Spanish. Yes. Got it. Okay. I, I agree, right? Yelling isn't going to make it uh, better. I think the only thing that we've talked about before is if you encounter somebody who doesn't speak your language, really dumb down the language until you ascertain, you know, what their level of understanding is. Absolutely. All right. And, and it gets better, but it's still, it's just a really interesting thing to listen. And, and by the way, the other thing you can hear this, this lead is distracted. He's having a conversation with somebody in the background too. So again, yeah. you have to be patient and understanding. You've got somebody on the phone, let them do their thing, even if it's a dumb thing so that you can eventually, well, I mean, it, it is frustrating. Like, why are you talking to me and somebody else at the same time? I'm going to get is. frustrated as a human, but remember my goal here is to be this person, my client, and therefore, I might have to get frustrated. You know, it's super frustrating when you're trying to talk to a lead and they're like yelling over their shoulder or, you know, there's like lots of distraction going on in the background. Uh, I mean, we're human, man. Like, you know, all of us salespeople aren't just salespeople. We're not robots. We're human, too. And, and it's annoying. It is. So but, you, you know, it's our job to control our state. And that's just kind of where I'm at. Here we go. Play a little bit more. Maybe. Hello? Yes, hello. Oh, yes, I was trying to look at a property. Okay, yeah, which one? Uh, the address is 1432 Overo Circle. Overo Circle. Okay, the agent's when would be up. a good time for you to go and look at it? 
Oh, there we go. Good job. Yeah, so great. I mean, I think he was trying to look it up, but he basically, the second he heard, okay, he's done talking, he went into the right question, and I love that. Hey, when would you like to go look? He doesn't yeah. even know if this house is listed. It could be pending. It could be under contract. It could not even be listed at all, but he he said the thing, and Dale and I said, when would you like to go see it? Go it's for easy it. To, it's easy to cancel an appointment, right? Yeah. Um, well, cause, um, I, I mean, I've been looking at this property and like, um, I was wanting to go and look at it, but I'm, but it, it, it seems like it's pending or like, I'm not sure if I could still look at it or if it's already sold. Oh, yeah. Let me go ahead and double check that for you. It looks to be 1432. It is pending. That means it's gone under contract already um is there any other properties like that, that okay uh... pause all right so here's what i knowing what just happened now i don't know what's going to happen with the rest of this call but it's not very long and we're halfway through it already or more than mm -hmm. halfway through it so what i would suggest is if you we all know <clears throat> that if i don't have a lot of rapport built with somebody i don't have any kind of hooks into them and they ask me is that property still available right? If the answer to that is no, uh, there's a very good shot that this person's not going to talk to me anymore. So we're done. I think you, we're <laughs> done. Right? We're pretty much over. Not always, but there's a very good chance. So when the guy says, I just, you know, I've been looking at it for a while. I want to see if it's still available. I would acknowledge him and I'd say, oh yeah, I could definitely look that up for you and see if it's still available. I'm going to pivot to some questions about them. Who are you? How long have you been looking? Or do you live in the area? Are you relocating here? Is that what yeah. you were going to say, Brian? Yeah, I'll, I'll piggyback on that. Most people do exactly what this agent did. And, and by the way, I'm not, Dale and I are not suggesting that you lie to this person. We are suggesting right. that before you answer their question, you answer, you ask some different questions. So because what's about to happen is, is we're going to see is this person's going to say the infamous thing, which is never true, but it's an infamous thing that people say, I'm only interested in this property. This is the only one I want. I don't want another property in the entire United States. I'm only interested in this one. Well, yeah. of course, that's not true. But that's what's going to happen because you set yourself up. And I appreciate the concept of, well, can I help you find a, a different house? Is there another property you would be interested in? But the problem is, if we don't, if the answer is no, we put ourselves in a box. So I want to suggest also that there's a possibility where I would have gone and we'll listen to some more of this is if I put myself in that box. Hey, I'll tell you what. A lot of times stuff goes under contract and then it falls out. Why don't we go, I'll get it set up. We'll go look at the property. And that way, since this is the only one that you're interested in, blah, blah, blah. And what that's doing is giving me an opportunity to meet the person face to face. And once I meet them face to face, I have a better opportunity of making my, them my client. Would you agree with that, Dale? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll play a little bit more. You would, uh, you would like... Uh, yeah, no, not at the moment. I was specifically like uh, wanting to look at that one. At this one. Okay. Um, all right. Are We're you, stuck, right? Is it just this specific property or are you currently looking for a home? Yeah, um, no. Yeah, it was just for this specific property. Okay, pause okay. again. But uh, you say. Okay, now the guy already said once. He only wanted to see that one. Mm -hmm. Please don't offer that again to him as an answer to give you back, right? And and I know the salesperson was stuck. I know he yeah. was struggling. He was he was trying to figure out what to do. But this is why we play the game tapes, right? That salesperson needs to hear this, and he needs to hear, okay, I got stuck. Now we all get stuck sometimes. But if mm -hmm. you're stuck, please don't give them the the uh, objection that they already told you as an option to give you again, because mm -hmm. that's what you got. That's what yeah. you got back. It's, it's called reinforcing the objection, right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> and that... and you know, the, I mean, I, I train on this a lot and something that I have to remind salespeople of all the time, you're a salesperson, right? And unless somebody wants something from you, they generally default to, I don't want to talk to you or I don't right. want to interact with you. 
because listen, we all think we all believe that we're nice people and we care about our clients and we want to do what's best for them and we want to help them. And we're all altruistic about this stuff. The reality <laughs> is they regard us as a salesperson and they mm -hmm. already are predispositioned to be like, no bad salesperson unless I need something and then I'll interact with you. So he's already predispositioned. This caller, this lead is already predispositioned to say no to this salesperson. And then when what he wants, he can't have. And the salesperson's like, oh, okay, got it. Do you want to tell me no again? Or should we continue a sales conversation? He's like, no, <laughs> no sales conversation. Thank you very much. I wanted a house, not a sales conversation. Right. You know, and what I would, where I think I would have gone um, if I'd gotten in this box, because he put himself in a box, right? Yeah. From a, we used to say that a lot in sales is, oh, you're in a box. You get your work way out of the box. So, what is it that you like about this property? Do something to get the guy to talk about the property or because I don't know. And I was actually going to look this up. Uh, I haven't looked this property up, but honestly, the majority of the properties that are built in my market, I bet you literally this exact same floor plan exists someplace else inside this subdivision or yeah. within a half a mile of this house. So, you know, if we find out, oh, I like this and this and this, and I can even ask him, hey, by the way, I can find this floor plan. It looks like this house is built in such and such. You know, if I can find another house that has the exact same floor plan, would you be interested? Now, I don't want to put myself in that big of a box, but at least I found a way to potentially get a yes. Because the person says no to that, I, that would be baffling to me. You know, yeah. if I can, if the next door neighbor's house is the exact same floor plan as you and it's, you know, an eighth of a mile away, would you be it? Well, yeah, of course I would. Like, I think yeah. I would. I don't know if they would or not, but it, you got to come up with something that, that shows that you're paying attention to what this person actually wants instead of, well, they just want this property. I guess I'm screwed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's another, here's another option. Uh, if you found, you know, when he found himself there along the lines of what you did, he could, the salesperson can ask, Hey, what is it that you really loved about this property? Uh, in case another one pops up like it, I can throw I can send it out to you. Right. Yeah, super positive. It's not like, oh, I'll go find you another one. Um, but it's just another option in addition to what you did, right? Similar option uh, to help you get unstuck. Yeah. And, and you know, guys, the, what it comes down to, if you're not practicing, this is why you need to practice. Because this is a relatively easy script to do well with. Hey, I'm only interested in this one house. Awesome. What particular, what specifically about this house makes you excited? Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and if he would have just asked that simple question there, this whole call might have gone differently. At a minimum, he could have done some kind of discovery that would have come from, oh, I like this and this and this and this and this. Oh, okay, perfect. Well, you know, by the way, I can call him tomorrow. Hey, by the way, I know you said you're only interested in this one property, but I found this other property that has all this criteria, you know, meets every one of the boxes that you checked. Why don't we just go take a look at it and see if it's something that you might actually... It, and again, I don't know where he's going, but we part of the reason we don't know why he's only interested in this house is because we didn't ask. Yeah. Where did that call end? What happened? Basically, it just goes away. Um, I mean, we've I can play the last yeah, I'm end curious. of it. Let's hear what okay. happens. All right, cool. Give me one second. I'm going to reshare my screen. As Dale and I get really good with this software. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, that you I'm look like it's under contract already, right? It is under contract already, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, when I said it, when I said it, basically just went away. It basically wow. just went away. Wow. 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 Okay. And I, and I understand the frustration. Like he tried a couple of things and none of them worked, and it felt like he'd run out of bullets to shoot out of his gun, for lack of a better analogy. Yeah. 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 Uh, man, you know, I know that, I know that you're, I, you have to be kicking yourself after you as the salesperson, you know, when it, when it sort of just, just deflates like that, we've mm -hmm. all been there. I've definitely been there. Um, and here's what I would say when you hang up that phone and you're like, shit, what, what should I have said? You know what, man, just think of whatever question you should have asked them, call them back. Just there you call, go. Them back. Who cares? Like that. call them back. You know, and then if they don't answer, call them again. And if they don't answer, text them, whatever that question is. Yeah. Uh, and just you can you can redo it, man. It's not you don't have to be perfect in the first shot. I mean, that's what we're here to do. We're here to try to up our game and be better in the initial shot. But 
if you realize that you screwed it up, just jump back in there and try it again. You can't get any knower, right? Well, it, it, you know, it's I, I used to say this in another sale. It, it doesn't hurt to throw the hail mary. Like, who cares? I'm already I'm already at no. I already yeah. have no intention of having a conversation with this person again. Throw the hail mary, see what happens. Again, yeah. you can't get you can't get more no. I mean, it's yeah. it's a binary yes or no. You're either yes right. or you're no. You're yeah. no. So right. Yeah, what do they say? You uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it's already broke, you can't screw it up, right? So in this case, it's already broke. You can't screw it up. So just give them a uh, try it again. Yeah, I, I love that. And then you know, if you're if you're not okay doing that for whatever reason, at a minimum, review yourself and say and get with get with other people, get with your your team leader, get with your mentor, get with your friend, and say. Listen to this call. What, 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 what your, where would have you gone? And oh, yeah. if you, if you just do those little things, that's de- That's what Dale and I are doing on this on Cash Call every week. We're just saying, hey, you missed this opportunity. You missed that opportunity. And granted, this is kind of our area of expertise. But there's still other people who can help you, who you know locally that can do that. Or heck, get on the call with us. We'll help you out. So um, you know, don't just go. Well, it was a bad call, bad lead. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's no such thing as bad leads, right? Yeah. They just haven't, I, they aren't buying or selling yet. I, 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 uh, right. I, I say a similar thing. The only bad lead is the one I can't get a hold of. <laughs> True. <Yeah. laughs> because right. that doesn't allow me to use any of my skill set. But if I get you on the phone, if I get you out of text, then we can have a conversation. I have an opportunity to uh, to convert you, to get you an opportunity to, to, to help you reach your goals. How about that for a positive There you spin, go. Right? Reach your goals. I love it. Uh, participation trophies for everyone. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. All right, Brian. Thanks for joining us today. Cash Call, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Cash Call today. If you like what you heard, come check us out at smartsalescoaching.com and we'll be back again next week.